Turkish minister calls LGBT rights terrorist propaganda. <laughs> I love stuff like this. It makes me laugh super hard. Okay. Um, on November 12th, Turkey's interior minister, Suleyman uh, Soylu, describes LGBT rights, described LGBT rights as quote unquote terrorist propaganda in a speech to members of the ruling Justice and Development Party, also known as AKP. There, quote, there is cultural terrorism, the, the propaganda of the terrorist organization, which tries to make people forget their values, their religion, unity, parental love, and familial loyalty. It is exactly Europe's policy, exactly America's policy of divide and rule. So, so Soy Lu said in a speech, in terms of protecting LGBT rights, he said they are trying to create a policy based on an understanding that will alter almost all all of our values so that they can win the hearts of the Europeans in the West. Soylu had been, has been known for attacking the LGBT community. Last year, Twitter flagged him for a hateful speech when he tweeted about four LGBT perverts that were detained for inciting hatred. In reality, these were students who were protesting against homophobic administrators at their university. <laughs> um, but they did it in a blasphemous way. And this is, you know, the perverts and the hatred, blah, blah, blah. Along so it, alongside Soylu, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has also supported constitutional amendments to protect families from, quote unquote, perverse LGBT trends in the country. Thousands of protesters also took part in an anti-LGBT demonstration on September 18th, urging the government to ban what they say is LGBT propaganda. The Associated Press described the march as the largest anti-LGBT protest in Turkey. He's gay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm almost sure. Guys, put your bets. I think he's gay. Um... Sorry, oh my sorry. god yeah <laughs> okay well that's a different story i thought this was really interesting i think well what i thought was this turkey seems to be going in this direction of you know how russia and hungary have these policies and laws against lgbt propaganda and how they use this to like criminalize basically like any like rainbow flags anywhere, any mention that gay people exist, any education on the topic whatsoever. This is now like harmful LGBT propaganda that is going to take your children from you and all this stuff. And in Russia, it's gotten extremely dangerous for the LGBT community because um, gay men in particular will, because of the rhetoric coming out about it surrounding this propaganda, gay men will be assaulted and um, R-worded by other straight men, basically as punishment for, you know, the propaganda they're spreading throughout the country. Like, it's really, really violent. Um, and unfortunately, it seems like Turkey is picking up a similar tone, of a similar flavor of how they want to start talking about this LGBT propaganda. And, uh, apparently the ruling party is considering some constitutional amendments and this includes you know protection from perverse lgbt trends and also includes um protecting the right to wear the hijab which kind of surprised me armin you're more knowledgeable than i am in this subject like has the hijab ever been illegal in turkey like under Ataturk or anything yeah, I mean, it was banned in universities, universities, and you know, some government institutions and stuff. I think I remember, mm. but I think some schools and um, universities and stuff, which is weird for an Islamic country. I think it's a, little, it's a bit overkill uh, to put like it's one thing for France to say like no hijab in universities. But for a majority Muslim country <laughs> to say like no hijab in university, that's like yeesh, that's a little bit overkill. So yeah. like this yeah, constitution the um supported constitutional amendments include introducing the right to wear headscarves. 
and measures tackling family issues in Turkey, citing, quote, the family consists of the union of man and woman. Um, okay, that was just so interesting here. to me because I was like the right to wear headscarves. I wonder, I, I wasn't sure about how much that was actually a problem. Yeah, with a constitutional principle of official secularism, the Turkish government has traditionally banned women who wear headscarves from working in the public se sector. Turkey is weird. Turkey is like a mix of extreme secularism and mix of extreme Islamism and everything in between. It's very confusing. Like, it's very confusing. You have a country who was like, oh, Islamically saying that LGBT is terrorist propaganda, but also has a history of banning hijab in government places. Like it's just, And uh, it's Turkey used to be one of the most, I mean, previously, it used to be way more LGBT friendly than a lot of other countries in the region. Yeah, and because it's of going the, hard against the opposite direction. Yeah, okay, is it just the government that like? So we went from Ataturk to being going from forced secularization, as Douglas is pointing out in the chat, to now going through Erdogan, which is like the Islamization of the government. Um, however, what about the people? So I know Ataturk represent extreme forced secularism, and Erdogan now represents extreme Islamization of the government. But the people themselves, are they, are we seeing a shift back to Islamism or shift towards secularism? Um, I know is, amongst Turkey's to... youth, amongst the younger generations, they are having a huge backlash. Well, maybe not huge, but they are having a significant backlash to the forced Islamization of Turkey. There's been lots of polls on it. The young people are not, they're not, they're not playing with it. They don't like it. Um so I don't know about the older generations though, and let me see, um, look for a moment. So just like the for, just the like the for secularism backfired, and caused a resurgence of Islam in Turkey. I mean, that means that we're now we're saying if an Islamization of Turkey's government is now causing another backlash in, uh, towards secularism by the young people. So okay, here's a. According forth. to 2020 Pew Research, 25% of Turks said homosexuality should be accepted by society, with 57% opposing it. The acceptance was higher among educated people at 41% and young Turks at 34%. So even amongst the population, there's not a lot of support. No, no, no. So the main thing you have to look at is not the level, it's the trend, okay? So you're saying there's 25% acceptance. So what we have to see is not like, oh, because like 25% is high or low. What we're interested in is to see what was before. Like, was it? Okay. In okay. In terms of a trend, here we go. According to a survey conducted by Kadir Haas University in Istanbul in 2016, 33% of people said that LGBT people should have equal rights. This increased to 45% in 2020. Oh, nice. The trend is in our favor, at least for the And people. there was a poll in 2018 that said that 55% do not want to have a homosexual neighbor, but this decreased the next year to oh. 46%. Oh, okay. So trend is in our side. Okay. By yeah. the way, guys, you have to look at the same polls because if you're like, oh, this poll said 55% at that year and this other poll said like 45% in a different year, you can't compare that because you have to just because the methodology could be different if you want to see if the tr how the trend works you have to focus we have to s stay with the same poll with the same questions and the same methodology to see if the numbers are going up or down um so Zagros is saying the islamization of the turkish government and military has been going on since the coup the coups of the 80s yes it was slow infiltration that first manifested with akp then accumulated with the attempted coup. Yes, however, that's the government. The people seems to the, the peoples of Turkey seem to be going in the other direction, which is good. Um, hopefully, they will become more politically active. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.